Number 15 then from the 2007 Advanced Higher Maths, Three Dimensional Vectors. And it's set out in four stages because it's a lead me by the nose through a technique style question. Now, in this case, it's meant to be how do you find the shortest distance between two skew lines? Except this technique doesn't actually explain how it's done at all because there's this point P which is crucial to it that's got no explanation at all of how it arose. So what does it say first of all? You've got two lines. So there are two skew lines in space. It's difficult to draw that in a flat surface. They look as if they cross but they're not meant to. They are not meant to intersect, and of course the first thing you'd have to do in part A is show that they don't intersect. Right? Fair enough. And it says there's a third line which is perpendicular to both of them. So it cuts through them both at right angles, which is a critical condition for the shortest distance between them. The shortest distance must be perpendicular to both lines at the same time. And it says, find the equation of that line in part B, given this point on it, P, which it then says in part C, verify that that lies on line 1. And of course, knowing where point P is, or being able to find point P, is crucial to finding the shortest distance. But nevertheless, find the equation of line 3, and then find the intersection with line 3 and line 2, you call that Q. And then finally, it states that PQ is the shortest distance. Well, it would be if you knew how to find P. But yours is not to. Reason why? Yours is just to do and, well, just do. Do the question. So P is the point, I'll put it down here, P is the point 1, 1, 3, for some reason or other. Still, what have we got? Part A. Show that the lines don't intersect. Well, if they did intersect, there'd be a unique value of x, y, and z that satisfied both equations at the same time. So see if that will in fact happen. The x-coordinates would have to be the same on both equations, so that 2 plus s is the same as negative 1 minus 2t. Rearrange that. s plus 2t should equal negative 3. There's one equation. The y-coordinates, put that over here, would have to be such that negative s on this side, give the same answer as t on that side. I'll just say, rearrange that to s is negative t. We'll call that the second equation. And same with z. z would have to be such that 2 minus s in the first one, give the same answer as 2 plus 3t in the second one. Now, rearranging that, I'm going to have the 2s will cancel of s equals negative 3t. Which then gives me this third equation. Now, don't immediately jump to the conclusion that these are inconsistent equations. They could be consistent if t was 0 at that particular point. No, go through x and y, finding the values of s and t that will satisfy that, and see if it also satisfies this condition. So taking that, I could just say substitute 2 in 1. So substitute 2 in 1, and I would have, instead of s, it would be negative t, plus 2t equals negative 3. So that says straight away that t should equal negative 3. And then using equation 2, if t is negative 3, that means s is going to be the negative of negative 3. So s is going to be 3. Now you could either put those into the z component parts of lines 1 and line 2 and see if they're the same or not. Or since we've got this equation written out, see if this also satisfies equation 3. So what happens with equation 3? In equation 3, s should equal negative 3t, but 3 does not equal negative 3 times negative 3, which means that the system is not consistent, which means the system is not consistent, So that lines L1 and L2 do not intersect. Part B, the line L3 passes through the point 113 and is perpendicular to both of these, obtain its parametric equation. So that's the equation in the same form of this. Well, if it's perpendicular to them both, you'll be using the vector product, which means I just need the direction vectors of these two lines. I'll we'll just call them u1, u2. And you can get those directly from here because the vector part must be whatever s is multiplying with the equation of a line. 
to find any point in a line, you need a point to start with, and then you take a certain number of steps of the direction vector of the line. Splitting that into its parts, remembering R stands for the position vector of any point. R stands for the radial line from the origin straight to. So that would have then that X, Y, Z would be A1, A2, A3, you could say, plus lambda, U1, U2, U3. Forming these parts, X is something plus the parameter times the first one. So those are the coefficients of the parameter. So U1 is going to be 1, negative 1, negative 1. And U2 is going to be negative 2, 1, 3. Which means that U3 will be U1 cross U2. 1, negative 1, negative 1, although I didn't need to put this part in, negative 2, 1, 3. Unless I was just going to do it the quick way, which I would do myself, but maybe you shouldn't, because you can just use these here to write the answer down straight away. But not because you're probably used to writing down that determinant. So I'll just put this work on the side. I, J, K, and I've got 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 3. And then under that you would write down, well, what have I got? I would be negative 3 take away negative 1, negative 3 plus 1, minus j times, crossing out the j part, 3 take away 2, plus k times, knock out that part, 1 take away 2, which gives me negative 2i, take away a 1, negative j, Take away another one, negative k. Which gives me in component form here, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 for the direction vector of the line 3. Now, if you've been looking at the marking scheme for that, you'll have seen that they've left it like this, which of course they shouldn't have done. Because it is only a vector that goes in the direction of the line that's required. The length of that vector doesn't particularly matter, except the bigger it is, the more cumbersome it is, and the less likely you'd be to use it. And the more negatives it's got is another unnecessary cumbersomeness. In a case like that, I would then say, so just use the simplest form of that it can get with the smallest positive integral values that's still in the same direction, so that's a multiple of it, that'd be 2, 1, 1. That'd be much neater. In which case, my line 3 would have equation in the parametric form, x equals the x-coordinate, 1, plus steps of 2 along, using whichever parameter you like. Maybe I'll just use a lambda here, plus 2 lambda. y equals the y-coordinate, starting at 1, taking step, whoops, starting at 1, taking steps of one lot of the parameter at a time, and z starting at 3, plus again one lot of the parameter each time. Now part c, find the coordinates at point q where lines L3 and L2 intersect, and also at the same time, or rather just after it, verify that p actually lies in line 1. Q. To find Q, which is where L3 intersects L2, that'll be the same as you did in part A. Only this time the system will actually work. So, this will be the point of intersection if the systems are consistent. So, for the x coordinates, 1 plus 2 lambda should give the same answer as negative 1 minus 2t. Tidy that up, and I would have 2 lambda plus 2t equals negative 2. That's very handy. Knock it all down by 2. Lambda plus t should equal negative 1. There's one equation. Y-coordinates. For the y-coordinates, negative... Oh, there's lots of wrong one. 1 plus lambda should equal t. Bringing that over, I'd have lambda minus t equals negative 1. That's equation 2. And I'll just put Z down at the same time here. For Z, 3 plus lambda should equal 
2 plus 3t. So that I've got lambda minus 3t should equal negative 1. Oh, I quite like these negative ones. Number 3. Now, you can actually solve any of those pairs and check it's consistent with the other one, but the obvious case here would be 1 and 2. So taking 1 and 2, if you do 1 plus 2, the t's will cancel out, and I'll be left with 2 lambda. Adding 1 and 2, I've got 2 lambda equals negative 2, which means lambda must equal negative 1. And then substituting that back into whichever one you like. Substituting that back into the first one, for instance. In number 1, I would have negative 1 plus t equals negative 1, which means that t must equal 0. And then I'll just check that with 3 for consistency. It says that lambda minus 3t should equal negative 1. Well, lambda is negative 1. Minus 3 times 0 comes to negative 1, which means the system's consistent. The system's consistent, and in fact, these are the answers. Lambda is negative 1 and t is 0. So the obvious case here to find point Q would be use t. So to find Q, I'm going to put t equals 0 in line 2. So that means that x would be negative 1 minus 0. y is going to be just 0. And z is going to be 2 plus 0. So Q is the point negative 1, 0, 2. Now, I didn't leave myself enough room there to demonstrate that P actually lay in L1, which was the last part of part C. Well, that will lie on line 1 if those coordinates give the same value of S each time. Or maybe you could just work out the value of S that gives the value of X equal to 1, and then check that value of S gives those corresponding values for Y and Z. I think I'll just work out the value of S each time. So what I've got. For X, I've got this. I've got 1 equals 2 plus S. That means s is negative 1. For y, I've got negative s equals 1, so s is negative 1. And for z, I've got 2 minus s equals 3, so s equals, taking over that side, negative 1. Which means I've got a consistent parameter, consistent parameter value, which means p lies on line 1. Then part D, PQ is the shortest distance between the lines L1 and L2. Calculate PQ. Well, PQ would be the length of the vector PQ. That will be the simplest way there. Get the vector PQ and get its length. So what's PQ? You could just state that straight away just by thinking of moves. Or you could plod through the Q minus P business. I've already started. So I've got Q was negative 1, 0, 2. P was 1, 1, 3. So PQ is going to be negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. So PQ is going to be the square root of those components squared. Negative 2 squared, negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared which is the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 1, which is root 6. The distance PQ is root 6.